many would be rich to the point of being wealthy by now but the system has been set up to rob us that is why you find that prices are so inflated even things that should cost even less are not costing less because people are in the business of making business or making money out of other people that is why even if you can look at the banking system the banking system it's meant to enrich the banks because they know that you don't have a way out even if you want to buy yourself a house or an apartment you can't really be able to save up for it with your current salary or wage you have to go and get a loan because still even if you can say that you are saving you have to be staying somewhere you have to be paying rental somewhere so how are you going to be saving for it and then when you go to the banks you find that they charge you interest rates and these interest rates they are so subjective they are very very subjective someone can be paying interest rates that are quite cheap and then another person can even be paying interest rates that are so expensive even though the property is the same or even if the profile can be the same it's quite subjective so many people end up being tied for like 30 years or even over 30 years they can't even get out of this highly priced debt so the other day i was watching a video by fantastic and then it was quite interesting the points that she was mentioning and i felt like it is good what she said it is right but she could have also added a non-risky element to it she could have also added other options to her solution of how people cannot or can stop being robbed by the banks so in her example she was saying that there is a couple that have a mortgage bond so they have a house this house is costing one hundred and fifty thousand dollars and then they paid a deposit which is the ten percent and then now the the balance had to be financed by the bank the balance of one hundred and thirty five thousand and then they got a deal the interest rate was seven point seventy five percent and then the term which is 30 years meaning that the monthly installment that they are going to pay every month is 967 dollars and then their joint income this couple is 5200 per month and then all their expenses including their vehicle including their mortgage bond is 4100 meaning that they do remain with uh, $1,100. So if you can go onto your amortization table, and I think you should do this exercise for yourself. You can get uh, any amortization table anywhere, like just Google um, calculating mortgage bond with extra payments. So the one that I got, it's this one. I am not affiliated with them. So this is uh if your home amount is 150 and we've put in that our down payment or our deposit is 15,000 our loan amount becomes 135,000 it uh interest rate at 7.75 loan term 30 years oh sorry i'm loan term 30 years and then you make the additional payment of 1100 it becomes if you calculate you are going to see that you are going to be paying the 967 it shows you you'll pay the 967.16 the then your total payments that you are going to make remember you only borrowed 135000 it's going to be 348170 because of that particular interest and then if you look into your amortization table you are going to see that in the first in the first uh in the first years what goes towards your your principal is too little so 871 goes towards your interest while 95 only goes towards your principal and as you pay it increases so that's why you end up paying in 30 years so she was telling them that the solution that they need to go for is to have a line of credit get your line of credit from the same bank imagine get a line of credit and that line of credit is even more expensive the rates that they are going to charge you will even be way higher so she said that get a line of credit of like ten thousand dollars and then if you are putting in all your income into that particular line of credit 
you will be able to pay off that credit in six months so it means that in month seven you can now pay the ten thousand dollars onto onto your bond which is going to be reducing your bond so every seven months you pay that particular ten thousand and the reason for this is that uh she says that it's because the banks they calculate their um, average uh they calculate their interest on the average daily balances so if you are putting in all your salaries going to make your balance to look so low so you are going to be saving on on the interest and then so this is what she came to if you look into this table so obviously your capital that you'll end up paying is the 135,000 and then your interest you are only going to be paying 31 thousand thirty one thousand six hundred and forty four because every seven months you are going to be putting in ten thousand which is going to be reducing your your capital balance and also saving you on interest but also you are going to be incurring uh interest as well on that line of credit so she estimated the interest to be this over the period the five thousand one hundred and fifty nine and then it means that uh, the total payments that you are going to be eventually making on the bond, it is like um, these two amounts, which is the 166,644. And then it's going to be saving you interest by 176, 176,367 if you include the interest that you are going to save as well as the one that you have to pay on your on your other credit and it will save you time you will pay this bond in only 77 months instead of the 30 years just imagine six years five months which is quite good but i would say that there is another simple way to be approaching this instead of having now another debt taking out another credit which can reflect badly on your side or you might even misuse or you might not you might not use it according to how she's calculated it and you find that now you are spending more on the interest i would say just take that 1100 that you are remaining with every single month and then you put it onto the bond if you do that this is what's going to happen when you check when you check the table so if you do that the interest that you are going to be saving it's 172 to 70 and also you are going to be paying over your loan in just or your mortgage bond in just seven years two months let's check the amortization table you can see that more is going towards the principal because you are allocating the 1100 every month towards it so you can see here when you look so at the end of the day you've only paid forty thousand eight hundred and ninety nine in interest versus the 213 that you would have paid if you had just paid the normal monthly amount that you are supposed to be paying and you are going to finish paying off your loan in just 84 months so i would say there's no need to be using your credit card or your line of credit to be paying off for this loan. If you have money that gets left at the end of the month, just put it towards your bond. You are going to be settling it much, much faster. As simple as that. So I'd say try to negotiate your interest rates. And also if you do have a surplus at the end of the month, put everything into your bond that's after saving as well for your emergency funds emergency saving put everything onto the bond or if you have an investment that can give you a better return than the 7.75 or whatever they are charging you on your bond i would say that go ahead and put that surplus that you are making every month there than on the bond so so if you like this video don't forget to hit that like button and also to subscribe and also to watch more of my other content